Good morning. I am reading from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to fully understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything within me that offends you and lead me along the path to everlasting life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious and ever-present God, in these moments of prayerful listening, we ask that you will open our ears that we can hear, open our eyes that we might see, open our minds that we will grow to understand more completely who you are and what you are calling us to be and to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. According to the numbers listed on YouTube, since 2020, over 2.6 million people have experienced the four-time Pulitzer Prize winning author Robert Frost reciting his most famous poem. I've listened to that recording many times. 
And this week, as I've allowed Mr. Frost's voice to permeate my own thinking with his verse, I read through many of the posts that were on the poem's website. Of the many comments that resonated within me, one stood out. It read, when I was 20, I didn't understand what Mr. Frost was saying, and I laughed. 44 years later, I got it. Now, I'm crying. When I was in high school, our choral director was part philosopher and part therapist. He picked repertoire for the, co for the choir to sing that was musically interesting, but also had something valuable to offer in the text, at least from his perspective. For the school graduation ceremony, Mr. Bergman selected the Randall Thompson 1959 composition of the Frost poem, The Road Not Taken. Most of the choir members were less than thrilled with Mr. Bergman's choice, but he was steadfast with it. So the choir learned it, and they sang it. Even though at the time I wasn't fond of either the poem or the musical setting, the seeds of the text were planted deep in my soul. Looking back, I think during every season of decision-making that I have faced over the years, that text has been a source of guidance and inspiration. It's helped me to have a little courage to make the tough choices. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. As I prepared this message, I kept wondering whatever happened to Clarence Bergman. We stayed in touch for about a half dozen years, and then we lost touch. With the internet's help, I discovered that upon retiring from teaching, he, along with his wife, moved to Alpena, where, in retirement, he directed the choir and sang at the Alpena United Methodist Church. He died in 2013. In my search, I found and read his obituary. It was actually intriguing to read the tender reflections written by many of his former students listed on that obituary page. It was fascinating to discover that the choral work that was referred to more than any other that made a positive difference in the lives of his students was the road not taken. The poem, written in 1916, not when Frost was an old man and looking back over his journey of life, but rather when he was in his prime, in midlife, at age 42. With typical Robert Frost imagery, he was able to unite his love for the beauty of nature in rural New England with the individualistic journey of a person trying to find their way through the maze called life. Mr. Frost was not a particularly religious person, yet his mother's Swedenborgian values of universalism that was based on love, respecting and honoring nature, and doing all the good that anyone could do permeated his poetry. Well, as I was studying Psalm 139, particularly in the context of listening, spiritually listening, 
I saw an interesting connection between the psalm text, Robert Frost's poem, and the Ignatian spiritual practice called the examine. I love the way the New Living Translation phrased it in the Psalms. I read it to you a moment ago. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and you know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up, you know my thoughts. You see when I travel and when I rest. You know everything that I do. And then at the very end of the psalm, the psalmist prayed an invitational prayer that's difficult for many, many people of faith to pray sincerely. The psalmist prayed, Search me, O God. Search me. And know my heart. Test me. And know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything within me that offends you. And lead me along the path to everlasting life. Ignatius of Loyola, considered to be the founder of the Jesuit order in the Roman Catholic Church, developed a dimension of the spiritual journey that I believe resonates with all of us who live a busy life and yet wish to practice a spiritual discipline. It's called the daily examine. It's a prayerful reflection on the normal events of a day in order to see God and feel God at work in our lives, in our daily lives. Among Jesuits as well as many other spirit, spiritual practitioners that have adopted it, the examine is practiced twice daily, at noon and then again at the end of the day. It is a five-step process. Let me share it with you. Number one, be aware of God's presence. Number two, review your day with gratitude. Number three, notice your emotions. Notice the emotions that you are feeling that day. Number four, choose one aspect of your day, either an emotion or a challenge or a concern or a celebration, and then pray from that place or perspective. And finally, look forward to tomorrow. Be aware of God's presence. Review your day with gratitude. Notice the emotions you are feeling. Choose one aspect of your day and commit that part to prayer. And look forward to tomorrow. After hearing and reading that psalm text, can't you see the connection between the psalmist's prayer of search me, O God, and know my heart, and the contemplative, prayerful, and discerning spiritual exercise of self-examination. I think it's at least possible, it's at least possible that everybody in this room has some form of spiritual practice. We all have an awareness of God that has been developed within us. Elsewise, you wouldn't even be here attending to the worship of God. Something is at work inside of you. Something is drawing us Godward. Now, perhaps it's reading a daily devotional. 
Perhaps it's praying a prayer at various times of your day. Perhaps it's listening to music that transcends your circumstances for a few moments and takes you beyond the worries or the concerns of the day. Perhaps it's going for a walk and noticing, just noticing the beauty and wonder of nature or noticing children at play or a kindness that is observed. And all of it functions as a reminder for you to give thanks for the creativity of God. Perhaps it's God's spirit that is at work in you, teaching, calling, being there. Perhaps spiritual practice is not nearly as mysterious or mystical as we might have imagined it to be. Richard Rohr put it this way, spirituality is about being ready. Isn't that a great line? Spirituality is about being ready. And the spiritual disciplines of your life, prayer and study and meditation or ritual, are there so that we can break through to the Holy One. Spirituality is about awakening the eyes and the ears and the heart so that you can see what's happening right in front of your eyes. My friends, throughout our Lenten journey, we have focused on spiritually listening. Spiritual practice is that which helps us develop the ears to hear and the eyes to see and the mind and heart to begin to understand what God has done in the past, what God is currently doing, and what God will do yet in the future. And part of the spiritual practice of listening is testing. It is examining what you believe that you are hearing from God. Now, please don't be foolish enough to overlook that step of testing your intuition. Because once in a while, the intuition is not accurate. And you have to test it. You have to examine it. You have to make sure that what you are hearing is really from God. So be like the psalmist, will you? Be like the psalmist who can pray sincerely and transparently, search me, O God, know my heart. Point out anything within me that needs correction. For you see, it is then, it is then that we are able to look back in hindsight and look carefully at the road we have taken and you will see in hindsight those roads that diverge. And if you look closely, if you look very closely, you will see that God was there. Take courage. Be of good cheer. God is with us. So in the quietness of this morning hour, O oh God, grant us your wisdom and grant us your courage for the facing of this hour. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. During the 80th birthday celebration for Mr. Frost, a journalist named Ray Josephs secured an interview with the famous poet. In the course of the interview, the journalist asked Mr. Frost, 
In all your years and in all of your travels, what do you think is the most important thing you have learned about life? Mr. Frost paused for a moment and then with a twinkle in his eye under those brambly eyebrows, he replied, in three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. It goes on. In all the confusion of today, with all of our troubles, with politicians and people slinging the word fear around, all of us become discouraged, tempted to say, this is enough. But life goes on. It always has, it always will. And don't forget that. I think that's a fitting benediction, don't you? Life goes on, and we are invited to participate to the fullest in the life we've been given. May God bless you on your journey. Amen.